I love him. Yeah. yeah. Well, yesterday you popped up so stinking fast. It was opening day. Dude, we had two hours of sleep. That's why I'm not popping up fast today. <laughs> stinking arm is swollen. What yellow jackets do to you? Vitamins. <laughs> you got something else. I got your vitamins too. You got my vitamins? <laughs> oh. Say cheese. It's frozen. <laughs> All right, let's day two and things change here on the coast. We got some ocean fog that rolled in and caused some rain throughout the night. And it's uh, going to be wet today, but Donnie's up as a shooter, so I can just hunker back and stay dry and warm. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, we uh, rotate every day shooter, so primary shooter, and uh, working in a team like this, it gives us a chance to really focus on who's a shooter and who's a caller and specific responsibilities, so yeah. Donnie's responsibility is not to miss. <laughs> <laughs> Might have just yeah. jinxed him. Yeah. So, we're going to head up uh, same area we went yesterday morning, we got into those elk, let them settle down last night, and... Uh, we're going to head in there and see if we can buy a bugle out of them and start chasing. All right. Any words of wisdom, Donnie? I, so last year, after John pushed me down, my goal is to not fall down on the way in this year. That's good. So What is this? It's my chest hair. I got it caught in my zipper and it's pulled too, out. I can't get it back out of the, it's too bad out of the zipper. It's too chest hair. It's a little windy today, so we got a mic rabbit. up where they were bugling yesterday, but he only answered the cow call. 
falls once we tried raking, just the wind's questionable here, the wind's kind of going up the canyon, the bull was over there, so it's open, if we could get him committed and coming this way, then we could make a move and get the wind a little better, but he's quiet, so we're going to go back with the wind in our favor now, drop down into the next drainage, see if we can buy a bugle. They're getting expensive though.
lots of tracks and fresh signs, so they're in here. We were here this morning, it looks like. It just a matter of getting up to talk. So in each daily episode here in Destination Elk, we're going to try to provide uh, just a tip, tactic, strategy type uh, information uh, titled Strategy for Success. And it's sponsored by the Rocky Mount Elk Foundation. And today's Strategy for Success uh, revolves around my bugle tube and not how you can get one of these cool bugle tubes with the custom Sitka subalpine sleeve on it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But more so, the question we get a lot is, why do you cow call through your bugle tube? And especially in an area like this where we're hunting, the foliage is so dense and the sound just really gets absorbed in there. So when we're trying to get a response from a bull, and especially here early season like this, where we're not as aggressive with the bugles yet, we're still definitely using the bugles. And if we can get in close, we're gonna get aggressive. But for now, we're just really trying to get a response from the bull and we're using the cow calls for that and so in an area like this being able to take the diaphragm and cow call through the tube if we feel there's an elk over across the drainage 300 yards from us we can point the bugle tube and it's really going to amplify that sound another thing we can do is if we are calling in a bull and the wind's blowing a certain direction we want to pull him right up into a certain spot we can change the direction of the cow calls and it might not seem like much but it really it's easy to broadcast another 20 or 30 yards off to the side just using the bugle tube. So if there's a bull coming this way and we need him to swing down here, we're going to point the bugle tube 90 degrees and cow call through that. And it's usually enough to get him to turn and go down there where we need him to. And then another time is if we're hunting a, a tactic for somebody hunting by themselves, a solo hunter, if you're calling, turning around and using the tube and bugling behind you or cow calling behind you it's going to send that sound back behind you it's almost like trying to be a ventriloquist with the calls make them sound like they're coming from somewhere that they really aren't so you'll see me use the the bugle tube a lot to cow call if we get into bigger country like where we're heading next in wyoming we're going to get on a ridge and cow call and just really try to get a loud cow call out there to get a response from the bull as we get into some more call-ins and situations, we'll explain some of our calling tactics, specifically um, why we would want to start with a cow call. Uh, but we'll save that to when we actually get in and start calling in elk. <laughs> so that bull that we were trying to get to come in here a little bit ago, he never would lip off anymore. He would never bugle anymore nothing else from him so we looped around a thousand yards down to a peak where we could broadcast some bugles down into another basin and nothing down there wanted to talk either so it's starting to rain now fog starting to set back in it's chilling off so we're going to uh head back up to the trucks head back to camp dave Got a text that Brinker made it to camp, so we're gonna go meet up with him and uh, see what see what the evening brings. But it's just it's been socked in with fog, and that fog rolls off the ocean, just brings a lot of moisture and 
the only shooter today, so shooter always goes first. So <laughs> let him go through the brush and absorb as much moisture as possible. Yeah, it's still drying out. Uh, calling action's been slow. We're definitely into elk and hearing bugles every morning, which is awesome. Um, but it's we're, we're hoping it turns up just a notch more here in the next couple days. Get into some good early season calling. Uh, one of the things we forgot to mention is during this Destination Elk uh, video series here on YouTube, we've got some product to give away. And today's strategy for success from the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation was on using a bugle tube to cow call. And we had a handful of these custom covers made uh, for the Bully Bull Extreme bugle tube. And every single day during this series, we're gonna give away one of these bugle tubes. And the way you enter to win is just leave a comment right down below. Just comment something about how boring this is watching us hunt and not call anything in, or you know, just make a comment. And be sure and like the video. And if you can share it with your friends, that's awesome. The more views, the more Subscribe. likes, the more comments we get on this. YouTube likes those in the algorithm and it's gonna enable us to get more views be able to keep doing this and sharing this experience with you and this is an adventure for us this is something we've never experienced before yes the elk hunting slow right now uh, we're going to keep pushing really hard and try to get some more action but just being here in this this i mean this is incredible just this old growth with the ferns and everything so be sure and comment below every single day of the series we're going to give away one of these bugle tubes and we're going to give away one of the brand new, these aren't even out, they won't be out until January of 2019, but comment below, we're going to pick a winner every day to win a bugle tube with the Sitka sleeve and a brand new prototype diaphragm call that we're working on with Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. So, and yeah. we're going to have, we've got some Yeti coolers, some Yeti Panga duffel bags, some crispy boots, so stay with us. Action's going to heat up, it's August 26, it's early season. And uh, we're going to have some fun here. When we're on the way out, I'm going to try and find an Ewok. I'm sure there's plenty of them around here, too. <laughs> We've landed on the moon planet, or the, was it the forest moon of Endor? Yeah. <laughs> Return of the Jedi. The Ewoks are here. <laughs> Figured we'd fit in. How you doing, buddy? Good to, have you. Good to see you. How are you? Good. You guys look great. That, that's a good. <laughs> we think we have Idaho plates, but we'll at least look like the locals. There's a couple mossy horns, but they're not. They're barely legal. <laughs> you guys look good. Well, I shaved just before I got here. We've got pictures. we got real Western Oregon camel on. All right, well, we came back to camp and found our golden ticket. Uh, Picked yeah. me up on the side of the road. <laughs> Local vagrant living up here in the hills. <laughs> so, First humans I've seen in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> David is the one who invited us to Oregon to hunt Roosevelt's this year and couldn't make it. He's a famous musician and had to play a wedding last night. Because I really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. We August. cut that part out so my yeah. wife doesn't see it. Yeah. He did want to. He really I did. wanted to. I actually to. did really want to. Yeah. yeah. That's why he wasn't here for the opening day of elk season. <laughs> so uh, we're, uh, he's got all these areas here that they've hunted forever. And his good friend Brent has kind of shown us around the last day and a half. And now he's here. He told Brent, don't take him to any of the good areas because <laughs> I don't want him shooting one before I get there. So Brent has kept us in elk, but out I was of actually range. hoping you guys would shoot too before I got here. Then I'd have callers all week. All week. week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And no. since you showed up late, you're at the end of the calling rotation. I know, I am. I don't know how to blow a bugle, so you guys are calling. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry>. Convenient. <laughs> so we're going to head out tonight, and Brinker's going to show us where the elk are. Also, this is the first time that uh, you've seen our lovely camp. There it is. Where home, exactly did you get home stung Home sweet Oregon home. I didn't get stung in the face. I got stung oh. in the arm. Oh, it's a little... 
Yeah, huh? A so Popeye arm look going how on. That's what I that said. Is. Too much spinach. Too much spinach. And you can tell where the long sleeve stopped. Have you been going through any stickers? <laughs> some brush there. <laughs> See, I got stung there and it's... Uh, Ooh, that doesn't look good, buddy. It doesn't? You need an EpiPen? It's been 48 said. hours. I'm going to die from a bee sting. I think it would have happened. I don't want it to put you down. Feels hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you, can you pull your bow back okay like that? You probably shouldn't be shooting with the swollen arm. I don't yeah. know if you can be shooter. Yeah. He, yeah. Call, he calls with the other hand, so that's all right. <laughs> we'll go okay. find some bowls. Yep. That is our plush camp, though. We usually don't get to stay in a tent trailer. We usually. This is the first time we've been here for in the daytime and seen yeah. it, seen it in the day here, so. But now it's time to go kill an elk. Yep. Seems like I started the day with a bright light and a camera in my face and now I'm trying to go to sleep and another bright light and camera in my face. As you can hear it is raining, it's rained pretty much all day. Our stuff is soaked. So we are absolutely excited about having a tent trailer with the heater in it tonight to hopefully dry stuff out, hit it again tomorrow. I think we Covered about 12 miles today, hunted hard, didn't have much uh, for encounters, didn't see an elk today, but heard some bugles, set up once, and uh, we're going to hit it hard tomorrow and hopefully have a good call in here in the next very soon short time period. Alright, awesome day two in the books and uh, before we talk about day two just want to thank everybody who came out last night and was there for the live premiere yeah so awesome getting to chat with people and just uh, answering a few questions ahead of time and then seeing everybody there watching with us live so thank you to those who uh, made that happen day two uh, Oregon kind of uh, what? <laughs> what it's so weird it, like Fog rolls in and it doesn't actually rain like from the sky, but all of a sudden water just starts dripping out of the trees and off the leaves. And yeah. You get up high enough on the mountain up above, and it's sunshine up above. Yeah. Or down below. You get down below the fog and everything's dry. It's still socked in. You can't see the sky, but man, when you get in that fog, it's just, you walk through and it's like you're walking through a downpour. Parts of my pack are still wet, I think. <laughs> So we had a wet day too. Uh, we were introduced to why they call it the rainforest. And, yeah. uh, it was it was fun. We had uh, had some good 
experience. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think at this point we're recognizing we're hunting early, and our encounters are not going to be like what we're used to in kind of even the pre-rut. This is the pre pre-rut, and uh, it's going to going to be a challenge, but we're up for it. I think the thing that brought us, the allure that brought us to hunt the Oregon coast was just that terrain, just that old growth with moss growing on everything and those ferns that are just so brilliant and green. That was, that's why we're here. That's why we're hunting Oregon. It's for that experience. And, uh, you know, we're, we're learning a lot still. Hopefully you're enjoying still. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting good. Uh, you know, I think the, the one thing that, uh, that we need to mention is David Brinker is a good friend of mine and he invited us to to come and hunt Oregon with him and he's a, a musician couldn't be there the first day and a half so uh, he left us with a, a pretty good babysitter yes he did <laughs> so Brent knows the area like crazy we showed up at dark the first night and so going into opening morning we really didn't know where we were going and to have Brent there especially when we needed the the backups but he's the one that's kind of leading us into new areas and, and really making sure that we're kind of getting into elk. So without him, we'd be even farther behind than we are. He's a little camera shy, but yeah. we'll get him to open up here in the next couple of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Great guy, vast knowledge of, of Roosevelt and Roosevelt yeah. country. So yep. thanks for joining us. Uh, keep in mind giveaways every day. So all you have to do is just comment down below here on YouTube. Just leave a comment what, uh, what your thoughts are. Do you like what you're seeing? Do you like the train? Do you like, don't, don't tell us if you like us or not. Cause watching us walk around. <laughs> if you like seeing us bugle from very cool vantage points, but we've got a, uh, another prototype brand new call. That's not even coming out until January of 2019. We've got one for you. It'll be in a package. It won't be out. And I won't have my slobber on it, but that's what it'll look like. It'll be orange. Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls is making them. Uh, they're an Elk 101 Signature Series called the Champ. We've got one of those. We've got the Sitka Subalpine Sleeve on a Bully Bull Extreme Bugle Tube. So that's the giveaway for today. Every day of this series, we're giving that away with some other cool stuff. Today, though, leave a comment below. We're going to pick a winner for Bugle Tube with the cover and the new diaphragm call. And just a reminder, 15% off all Elk 101 apparel at the Elk 101 store during the month of November. What else am I forgetting? 20% off of University of Elk Hunting. Right. Donnie went ahead and dropped And a the... free shirt. <laughs> yeah. We'll make no money in November, but Donnie's yeah. giving away everything. So 20% yeah. off the University of Elk Hunting online course. Just go to elk101.com forward slash online course. Use the code DESTINATION. And be sure in the order comments to leave us your shirt size because Donnie decided to throw in one of those cool new Destination Elk t-shirts. Yeah. So, got a lot more apparel on the Elk 101 store, which is separate than the online course. So be sure and check out both of those locations and stay with us. We have a lot more uh, thick forest to walk through too. Yeah. You'll see in tomorrow's episode. And day three, which... Coming tomorrow, I don't want it to spoiler alert, but somebody fills an elk day. Yeah. yeah. Stay tuned with us. Come back for day three. Find out who it is that fills that elk day. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Yep. Thanks for uh, tagging along with us and letting us uh, share what we love with you. See you tomorrow. <laughs>